Hey folks, I want to show you something in Bitwig that I do all the time, recently at least. And it's very simple to do, and it's not really possible with most VST plugins. Maybe there are some specialized plugins for that, but uh, yeah, as far as I know, it's not easy to do. So here in Bitwig, we have some kind of drum bass tune. I show you how it sounds. <music> And of course, there is some kind of bass sound in here, and you can see the sub, then the second harmonic, the third harmonic, the fourth harmonic, and so on. And sometimes you want to change that. You want to change the second harmonic all the time, right? Or the third harmonic. But the problem is we play actually here a bass pattern, so with different notes, right? So when the notes change, also all the frequencies change for the fundamental, for the second harmonic, for the third harmonic, and so on. So what we can do now in Bitic is we can just use key tracking for the EQ, which is very powerful in my opinion, and it's not easy to do in most VST plugins. So here in Pro Q4, as far as I know, it's not possible to, possible to key track. You can use here down uh, the piano roll to pinpoint certain frequencies, uh, but you can't make it so it changes with the notes that come into the plugin. Maybe it's possible. Let me know in the comments down below. Um, so what I do most of the time is here in Bitwig, I just use an EQ, EQ5 for that. And maybe we also want to switch this here, the resolution to huge and speed to fast. Okay. So now we can see here the root or the sub, the second harmonic and the third harmonic and so on. And sometimes you, like I said, you want to change it specifically so the sound changes. Maybe it's not something you want to do on the bus or on the master, uh, but on an instrument you maybe want to do it. Uh, so here what I do is I just use the key track modulator. Um, key track plus, that's what I want to use. And then you can modulate here either the shift, the global shift, but the downside of this is that you actually can't see the modulation in here. So if you modulate this, you don't see the blue dots. Uh, so what I do then is I just modulate here uh, this individually. So here the first uh, band, then the second band and the third band. And I click here on the modulator on the left side, I type in 60, 60 and 60. So the question now is why 60, right? <laughs> uh, so when you highlight here the modulator and you pull up the help, it says um, <clears throat> the default curve works one to one key tracking for the broad frequency controls, the frequency parameter on the filter on the test tone device, it says set the parameter to C3 and then set the modulation amount to 60 semitones. So that's basically the range here of the key track modulator. So what we want to do now is we want to set the first band to C3 and we modulate it here this by 60. So perfect. The second harmonic is actually uh, double the frequency of the first harmonic or the fundamental here. And we can just say this is C4. Um, this is C3. And this is C4, so it's just one octave, and one octave means it's doubled the frequency. So that's why I type in uh, C4. Um, then we have here the third harmonic, and the third harmonic is, that's what I know from the top of my head, is G4. So this is basically three times the frequency of two, six, 262 hertz, right? And then if you want to have the four, uh, the fourth partial here, you just use uh, 262 times four and then you type in here the hertz. Um, so anyway, I just want to use here the uh, first three partials. Um, so now we can use a very narrow um, Q factor here, maybe 10, also here 10. And now we can target basically all of these partials uh, directly. You can say we want to take out the sub, right? And you can see when the note changes, it also changes here the uh, frequencies, of course. So second harmonic, third, 
or you can boost it if you want to, right? And that's very powerful when you want to change the sound of a bass sound on the instrument directly, because with this, um, the EQ becomes part of the instrument. And most of the times, bass sounds are monophonic, and the EQ is monophonic, um, so it's not a big problem. And I do this all the time, because I sometimes just want to take out here, um, yeah, the second partial of the bass sound. So I also made you a preset for this called Key Tracked Partials, and I put this here onto my GitHub, so you can download this for free if you want to. And then we have here also the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth, if you want to change that. You can completely change how the bass sounds with this. Um, so that's what it makes it so powerful. So yeah. That's what I want to show you because I do this all the time recently on most of my drum bass tunes uh, just to um, yeah, change the content or the frequency content of certain bass sounds and it's very powerful in my opinion. Another problem sometimes is here when you have a bass sound and some of the bass sound or the overtones of the bass sound uh, clash actually with the lead sound. So for instance here, uh, this sound So what you want to do is you want to EQ out some of these sounds or the fundamental of this lead sound from the bass. And you usually need some kind of um, spectral processor for that, but if you just want to keep it simple, um, all you need to do is to actually use a filter plus here. Um, sometimes I do this. It's not something I do all the time, but uh, Sometimes it's just, it does the job, right? So we don't need here the transfer curve or the, um, yeah, the distortion device. We just want to use here the uh, notch filter. Let's use an EQ, uh, what's the name? EQ analyzer, EQ curve analyzer, okay. Put this over there. So you can see here this um, notch filter looks like this. And when you use the mix knob, pull the mix out, it's more or less like an EQ dip. So we can completely remove the frequency or we just slightly remove it or not at all. So what we can do now is we can use a, a key track here for this. Um, key track modulator. Um, that's cool. And here we use a receiver a note receiver and we just pull down or pull in here uh, the notes from the lead. All music lead, maybe after quantize, okay. So then, you can see we receive here the notes from the lead channel or from the lead instrument. And we can use this then here to change the frequency uh, of this notch filter. We use also here 60, exactly 60, nice. So now we have uh, more or less the right frequency, but sometimes uh, when you release the note or the, yeah, when you just play a note and you release the note, you have some kind of release time, maybe you reverb on it or something like this. So you don't want to go completely out with the filter 
uh, at the moment you release the key. So you want to focus on the sound itself. So what we can do with this, uh, with this is we can use a sidechain modulator here, um, audio sidechain. And we also bring in here from the music, the lead sound, we use the post. So we receive basically the audio signal here and we can focus on this. And the more sound we have, the more we want to dial in here, actually the notch filter. And you can see this here. Maybe we amplify this a bit more. So we have a notch filter that moves around uh, on the frequency spectrum based on this uh, lead instrument here. Of course, it's very important that you don't change your actually the, uh, the ratio of the synth itself, right? Or you pitch it up inside of the synthesizer. You need to stay true to the key. Uh, so when you play C3, the instrument should play C3 or it doesn't make any sense. Um, that's very important to know. So uh, now that we have this in here, we can basically use the audio sidechain to modify how much we want to dial in um, the notch filter. We can also exchange this here for a different notch filter. I think there's a different one maybe, the XP here. There's a notch filter. Yeah, yeah that's not looking good. So we go back to SVF. You can make something like this if you want to have it polyphonically. So when you play chords and you want to take all of these notes from the chords and you want to reduce or remove it from the frequency spectrum, um, you can't do this with the notch filter. Um, you have to switch this then to a bandpass filter. It looks like this then. Maybe a steeper one. Let's use your selling key. Bandpass. Maybe dial it in here for a moment. And then you have to put this to 50% and then at the post FX you can use a tool device. So it gets, it gets complicated. It's probably not something you want to do. Or oh, maybe we modulate instead of this here, we go to 50%. Pull this down and then use this here. And then used on the filter plus, we can use here then voices and we can say we want to use 12 voices. So we can use up to, um, yeah, 12 notes. So maybe use two. Right, you can see we have now two notches here because we are using two notes. Uh, so it's more or less like a spectral reducing sidechain plugin. Um, but the downside is it only works with notes. So if you don't have notes, if you just use audio, audio material, it's not going to work because you need to pitch track and then you have a lot of latency and it's not correct all the time. And, you know, but if you just use notes, you can just receive the notes here on a different channel. Um, change the offset to certain filters and then use here an audio sidechain to actually change the amount, how much you want to dial it in uh, or change the amplitude of that. Um, so here the second one, the polyphonic thing, I don't want, I wouldn't use that. You can try it out, but most of the times the filter is not steep enough. BP-8 is not steep enough and it's experimental, I would say. But sometimes just monophonic material and you have a lead sound and you want to reduce the lead sound or the frequencies from the lead sound from a different channel. Um, this is okay to do, to try it out if you don't have any other plugins, right? Sometimes you are using Linux and you can't use any 
specifically designed plugins for that because it's iLog or whatever you are you are on a you know on a trip or on mobile or you whatever so you can do this kind of tricks here in Bitwig very easily um, just with this setup uh, maybe let me re remove this here for a moment so you actually a notch no SVF notch Yeah, it's kind of kind of works. Then of course we have to um, reduce, uh, remove here the um, EQ curve analyzer. This one, and then it does its job. Yeah, sometimes this is what I do. It's not perfect, but it's just sometimes it's enough just to reduce certain frequencies on a different track and it works in Bitwig at least very simply just by using your two modulators and the other trick with the EQ5 here is also very neat to do and I put you this uh, preset here in the, uh, on my GitHub so you can just download this and have some fun. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Uh, leave me a like if you like the video. If you don't like it, then also leave me a like, of course. Leave a subscription. Subscribe to my Patreon if you want to. If you don't want to, then um, okay, I guess. <laughs> See you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.